This is Drom Shekasuto. Shalom Ubracha guys, Shalom everyone. Hope you're doing perfect. Things are good. Trying just to recognize the real will of heaven from us. In every situation in life, we need to be tuned to His uh, to His divine will, to the um, to the point of truth that our heart is at in that moment. It's not a simple thing. In every point of the road, in every part of our journey to recognize the Creator's will and what's the real mission that we are being part of in every situation and in every moment but also just the effort itself of seeking for it and trying to find it and um, and to understand his will is something very, very precious. Last week we spoke about a very important thing. It was a longer class than I usually give and I put a lot of effort in um, trying to bring up a certain point that was very important for me. And um, like I said in the beginning, before the class started, I said that um, that it's going to be a journey, that it's not so simple um, for me every time to to know how to really reveal the messages that I'm receiving. And how can I transform my thoughts from being my deep understanding to simple words that will uh, answer and solve things and questions and situations in your life, lives. It's very complex for me sometimes to bring down my ideas and my thoughts into words um, because when I think and when I feel, so in the same time I'm usually able to experience few things, many times even many things in the same time, but when you try to bring it down to words, so <clears throat> you can barely complete one sentence, it's not so simple. But with help from heaven, tonight we're going to try to make another step into this um, sea of wisdom and to understand more things about what really is needed from our end, from our side to achieve completion and to grab those amazing fantastic tools that have been given to us by the Creator for the sake of the redemption for us really to be able to make a, a meaningful change in this world that will, this world will not going to stay in its current um, in, in its current position in its current um, situation we are willing to to climb above our daily issues and our difficulties and we want to make a real change in this world that things will not stay as they were in the past or as they are in the present time we are willing to pull down a huge amount of light that will shift our life to a higher level to a place of true happiness and, um, and long life with no death anymore so last week when we spoke I explained about the Torah and about its role in our lifetimes and I said and mentioned that the Torah 
is in one of the aspects of it is telling us the true history of our life since the first man's creation and his wife Chava and then the next generations that came out to the world and later on the generation of the flood Noah and then ten generations later Abraham and his children Isaac and Jacob went and by their merit the tribe of the tribes of Israel the nation of Israel been established and the whole nation um, went together to Egypt and after being more than 200 years over there in in poverty and worked as slaves and suffered so greatly in Egypt they've been redeemed <clears throat> and went out to the desert of Sinai um, under the kingship and leadership of Moses the man of God and on and on and the histories keep on rolling throughout the Bible and the testaments and stories that have been written to us and the visions of uh, the, the prophets in the rest of the 24 books of, of the Tanakh of the Bible and um, and we know that the history that is been described in the Bible is very very deep and very very meaningful and we know that the stories that we hear and that we read and that um, that we can learn from our ancestors are a reflection to our lives and holds inside of it many lessons and guidings and explanations that can hint us and teach us how to deal with our life today means that in a certain situation that you feel a certain difficulty that you face a certain challenge suddenly you feel like you're trapped like you are the Israel nation and you're trapped in front of the Red Sea and you don't know what to do and you feel like there are like um, people who wants to attack you and they are running and chasing you from the back and you compare you imagine you use the power of your imagination to feel and to sense and to understand more and you relate yourself to the stories of the Bible once you can find yourself related to a story about King David or about Moses or Abraham or Sarah or Rivka Rachel, Leah, all, all those righteous people are coming and reflecting something in our lives but when we are looking at today so today is also a day that the Torah will be written on and that the Torah will tell the story of today in the future in the future to come when the redemption will take place and people will look back they will realize that also our days and also the days of 2000 years ago or whatever they were also stories that were reflecting in a very very bright way the real true light of the Creator the real real wisdom of the Creator is taking place in all vessels around the world and all the creation that the Creator created is reflecting all the time the heavenly light of the Creator and in every moment of our lives we need to pay attention to that and to try to figure out what the Creator wants from me and how can I continue that noble legacy of, the, of, of our ancestors and the righteous ones now for an example um, like I said many times in reality the people of the earlier generations we can very easily understand that they were the messengers of the Creator and that they were shining the light of heaven because of the importance that the Creator and the verses in the Bible are, are putting on them like you hear a story about Jacob the son of Isaac and grandson of Abraham so immediately you know alright that's the, the, the child that took 
the the holy staff from his father and went and passed it to his children like it's it's very clear but then if you hear stories about the tribes about the 12 tribes of 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 israel of jacob so it's like it's harder to pay attention to each and every one of those individuals and when those 12 tribes 12 individuals they're having children so let's say that they have 70 children so it's very hard to pay attention on which every single one of them um, reflects what in my life like God or Zvulun or Naftali like I don't know exactly which character lines they have and and to learn from them so if something gonna relate to me if somehow I'm gonna read something that I'm gonna understand so great but really now to go and seek and all right now Naftali he had children I don't know how many children he had probably 20 10 12 20 like all right so how I'm gonna know exactly which of his children is reflecting which part of my life uh, it's very hard to track and even more so today to look at our lives today and to think to myself all right like that person what he is reflecting to me or like what am I reflecting to him it's very hard to tell why because you have billions of people around you and everyone is a thinner branch that reflects less than the real righteous people of earlier generations so it seems to be almost impossible for us to put our finger on 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 the message of the creator to us by while trying to learn message from life itself you try to pay attention you work with your awareness you try to listen to the voice of heaven you try to listen to what's going on in your life to the individual and private supervision very precise and beautiful on your life and to try to to tilt your ear and to and to tune your heart and to understand what's going on but many times it's very very hard because that the creation went to such place that today you have so 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 many people around you and everyone are coming with different shades with different colors and everyone are carrying a different message it's very hard to track and to recognize the message of the creator from every single one of us but our mission still is on and very much needed we are being asked from heaven not to give up on our true potential and even more so even though the challenge is great and even though that the difficulty in our days is greater than in earlier generations because you have so many distractions and so many things are attacking you on daily basis like starts from your thoughts and and from negative way of thinking to old patterns that have been purchased in the past and that, that you're still like trying to to move forward and you you barely understand what's going on with you sometimes you you talk without understanding why you just said those things and sometimes you react in a very aggressive or offensive or too sensitive or emotional way when like in reality you could have dealt with this situation better but like you're just stuck with the result of what had just took place and it came out from your mouth it came out from your hands and it's very very hard for a person to 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 learn how to improve when so many times in his life he finds himself not even capable of 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 choosing like lost losing control and and not being able to 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 take responsibility on many of our actions but the fact that the test is greater is harder doesn't exempt us from trying to take the full responsibility but and this is something very important that i wanted to discuss today like i told you in the end of last sunday's class i found it very very hard and complex to complete my words last week because that the topic is very very wide and holds a lot a lot of information and it's very very complex for me to bring it all once um, to the screen and to be able to put down all the details as one and also to wrap it it's 
kind of complex but um, so what did I wanted to discuss is like the end of what did I said last week so over there I explained about the Torah that the Torah has been given to us and in one aspect the Torah has been given to us as a book that um, a testament that uh, that that is telling us the real truth of what happened in the earlier generations and how exactly we found ourselves in uh, in those days that we were there like 3,000 years ago and even until 2,000 years ago and we should learn from that pattern of how the souls went um, from one um, from the smaller and most inner circles to the circles that are coming later on like first generation then second and third and fourth and fifth and tenth generation and like and on and on and on and if we just trying to think about it so since the time that Am Israel were standing and learning and um, receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai it was around 3,000 years ago that was uh, approximately how many years passed since time of Matan Torah till today now if you divide 3,000 years to to portions of 100 year um, each one so you have 30 30 times 100 is 3,000 years so it, it means that there were only 30 people that were 100 years old that saw each other's faces since Mount Sinai till today till today it's 3,000 years in those 3,000 years for sure there were elder people that lived at least 100 years each and in every generation one of them was passing the torch to the next generation so you have only 30 people since Mount, Mount Sinai until today it's, it's a tiny number it's a very short amount of, of people and the torch passed through those 30 people from one generation to the next until our generation today and even though that you feel so like oh way hey, man I'm so far like who am I and what's my connection and I don't feel it and I don't know it like if you look back you're gonna see like there's not more than 30 people from Mount Sinai until today and this is a ridiculous number it's a tiny number this is a number that you can understand that is not far from you um, at all to to like to understand how great is your potential also to come closer to that root because really it's not far away from you 30 people only 30 people that pass the knowledge from one to the next so maybe your family when you look you see all right they kind of lack of tradition they don't really know we haven't been taught my parents they went through this kind of exile my parents went through that kind of exile like okay whatever we don't remember so much but still even in our generation you have people that do remember you have people that are very much tuned and you have people that are enjoying a very high uh, in quality and in amount um, knowledge real true wisdom that gives life um, to the one who hears it to the one who accepts it now above the fact that the Creator gave us the Torah as a book that will show us and will clarify for us exactly where we came from and what's our mission and what's our role and where we came from and where we heading to um, the Bible the Torah is also revealing for us a set of rules the minimum of 613 mitzvot that had been given to Am Israel in the desert and except of those 613 mitzvot that are written you have another long long and detailed um, list of rules that named the oral Torah that had been given to us by many righteous people that lived in a generation that is called the generation of the Tanaim and also in the next later generation of the Amoraim that both of them composed and wrote the Gemara and the Mishnayot the Mishnayot and the Gemara now 
those righteous ones taught us the rules of the Torah and now the Torah is telling us, listen, you have a free choice. I give you, the Creator is telling us, I give you, I'm giving you the opportunity, I offer you life, good life and bad and death. And you should choose life. You should choose life out of death and you should choose good out of bad. When you see two options, one is killing you and one is reviving you, gives you life, you need to choose this one, one way, one path that is doing good for yourself and for your surroundings. You need to choose the good one. One is bad, that is hurting yourself and hurting others. Don't choose that one. So that's the main guiding line of the Torah that is telling us, and if you're going to choose good, you're going to find yourself in a good place. And if you're going to choose bad, you're going to find yourself in a bad place. And like, it's simple. Now, what's, what's my problem? I think what's our problem w with it? That there is another verse that is saying that en tzadik ba'aretz asher yaseh tov velo yichta. You don't have a righteous man that will walk on earth and will do only good and not gonna sin. You just, you don't have it. With all the, the sorrow in this thing and with all the difficulty of it, in reality, we're finding ourselves in that place that no matter what we do and how much effort that we put um, into that search and into that journey, into that mission of trying to do the best that we can, we are not able to succeed without failing. We're failing and we're falling all the time. All the time we fail and fall with our speech. All the time we fail and fall with our thoughts. All the time we fail and fall with our negative mindset. All the time. All the time, all the time we fail with our words, all the time we fail with our negative um, way of thinking, all the time we're failing and falling in so many ways that, it's, um, that it becomes very, very hard for a person to believe in himself. Because every time you try to do good and you fail, and you try to do the best that you can and you fail again and you try to improve and you fail and fall again and you try to remind yourself and you keep on forgetting and those things are attacking the person and breaks his self-esteem but i wanted to discuss this situation from a different angle if you remember in the last conversation we spoke about the beginning of time about the real history of what that took place with adam and eve and I don't want to get again into those details, but we see that Adam and Eve, like very, very fast, they failed, like Adam first, and then after failed, also Eve failed as well. And certain things took place in their lives in, in a horrible way that rejected them and, and sent them to the exile and into such places that were suffering from the result of those um, of, of those actions of, of theirs um, for, for until today. And it's very, very severe and it's very, very painful and we're suffering so badly. And this situation is very, very painful because we are keep on being punished on the fact that we're not being able to, um, to keep the Torah as it's written. And there is something that is called heaven court and that court is heaven is established by real holy angels that are sitting over there and they have only one intention in their heart their intention is to make sure that the creator will never have um, have no um, humiliation will never be insulted will never be not respected properly and those angels are trying to protect and to, and to defend the crown of, of, of the Creator from any kind of insultings and humiliations that will come from our end, that will come from this creation. Now those angels are coming and they are fighting with humans from day first, like we know, and every person that has some knowledge 
um, in Bible and in interpretations of it in by by the methods of the real true righteous ones he knows a little bit of that war between angels and humans from the beginning from even before creation all the time they're saying to the Creator look humans they will sin they are liars they will not gonna uh, respect you properly and on and on and the Creator because that he is the God of truth and he likes the trial and he likes justice so for that he must listen to their voice when they're speaking and to consider if their claims are claims of truth if really they are saying things that are right so he has to follow that he has to listen to those claims and to those arguments and to establish a trial and a judgment and if the people needs to be punished so people are being punished for what for choosing wrong, for going against the book, for going against the rules of the Torah. And even though that we know that the Creator, even more that He loves the trial and that He loves justice and He loves the truth, He loves the nation of Israel. And therefore, even when He is judging and even though that He is setting certain decrees and trials on His people, He's hiding himself inside those trials, inside those judgments. And while we are being judged in a way, there is a certain lesson, there is a certain message, there is a certain hint in that journey that brings us to good attributes, to good midot, to work on ourselves, to be happier, to understand things in a deeper way, in a more meaningful um, concepts and, and ways. So, like the, you find benefits, you find good results out of those hard um, hours and, and difficult uh, times that you go through in life. So, okay, we do understand that since the moment that the Torah has been given to us, or certain commandments have been, been given to us, now we need to follow those rules and we must, as creations that have been created for a certain role, we need to keep our jobs and we need to, to put our mind into the obligations and things that we took upon ourselves and to go and do the best that we can. And we can also realize that if we messed up and if we did something very, very wrong, so okay, like, I don't know, like if we, we have to pay for it. So the most honest thing that a person can say is like, okay, like if really I need to be, uh, to go through whatever I need to go through. So, okay, like, um, accepting it with love, accepting uh, the, the trial and the judgments on, uh, on myself, like with love, surrendering to the voice of heaven. If really that's heaven's court and those are the real um, uh, understandings and decisions of that heavenly court. So like, who am I to argue? Accepting it with love and, and, and taking it that upon myself and doing tshuva and trying to fix myself, to atone, to, to cleanse myself from the filth of this world. Great, ask me, I, I don't like it. And I'll tell you why. I do understand all that perspective on life. I, I, I can understand it. Like it's normal for you to say, look, what do you want? Like they gave you rules and you failed and you sinned and now it's time for punishment. But I, I I have an issue with that. And what's that issue? That I'm not arguing that if I am part of this game, so if I accepted that game on myself, so I need to play by the rules. But if I never accepted that game upon myself, if I, since the moment I've been sent to this world, like immediately I, I've been failed, like Adam and Eve, like we saw. Immediately, we saw in the Bible, we see over there the failures of Adam since the first moment of his life, like even before the sin with, with the tree of knowledge, fruit, even before that he was with his wife and, and had his relationship with his wife, even before, like, he found himself in weird places. Like, if you go deep into the ancient scripts and you read what's what happened over there so like he had a certain nature a certain natural curiosity 
that led him to different places and like he was acting in a certain way that was not proper and immediately and with his wife and then he didn't have the power to admit in his mistake and he's trying to avoid uh, the trial and tr and blaming his wife and blaming the snake and and she's also blaming and 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 and, and everything becomes so chaotic and everyone are being excommunicated, deported from Garden of Eden to the darkness of exile and start suffering from the curses and the land will not grow the fruits and, and will not enjoy the, the, the power of it anymore and women will suffer and, and from uh, going to give birth in pain and danger and, and horrible sorrow and on and on and all those curses of poverty and, and, and death above all death that is hovering above creation and threatening on every person to be killed like one day like no matter what what will happen with you no matter what you will do like the the angel of death with his sharp sword knife is standing and waiting above creation like to, for everyone like now if you're part of this game if you're part of this mission if you really took it upon yourself to get into that place and to and to roll the dice you you have part of the responsibility on the results on what it will happen but by that explanation that we explain that the creator before creation was all alone in heaven and there was no one there except of him and all the godliness that was there was not able with all the respect to the glory and to the beauty of, uh, of, of the Creator before time, before creation, he was not able for certain things. And those things that took um, place later on after creation took place only because of the fact that we went down to this world and we became people. We became people that from now on will worship, will admire, will love, will appreciate, will follow, will work, will sacrifice themselves or, or whatever uh, for, for noble causes, for amazing things, for good and high reasons. So a certain thing, first of all to think and to realize is that all the good that came out of this world all the uh, pure effort of certain people and all the wonderful actions of certain souls and all amazing sacrifices that people sacrificed for that amazing cause of making the world look as a much nicer and beautiful place and and people that revealed the light of the creator out to the world and taught us until today of so many wonderful things all that is by the merit of people like us, is by the merit of those people that were ready to, to ignore all difficulties and challenges of this world and to work as hard as possible to reveal only the good that is treasured inside of them. But even more so, in fact, we learned that the Creator before of time, before of creation, was all alone and there was nothing except of him and when he decided to create the world so for a fact he removed his endless light to the sides and created an empty space and in that round and empty space the creator created the worlds how did he create the worlds he sent a beam of light from the outside the outside means the endless sea of souls, the Creator Himself, the Infinity, the Blessed Infinity, and Sof Baruch Hu, from that source of light, from that endless light, He sent a beam of light into the center of emptiness, and that beam of light started to build layers and layers and layers and layers in an external way means that the light that had been sent from the outside, from infinity to the center of emptiness was an inner light, inner source of light that was building husks that was covering itself with layers of physicality till that place 
uh, that the world is at right now that today you stand on the globe, you stand on the land, you sail on the sea and you can see the sea, you can see the rivers, you can see the stones, you can see the trees, you can see the animals on the side of the mountains, birds flying in the sky, you can hunt, you can fish, you can talk, you can you can go out on a war, you can get married, you can have children. All of those things are the outside face of creation when really all the creation receives its power from within. From the same beam of light that's been sent slowly, slowly from outside to the center, to the core of creation and built the creation, built the creation on top of it and covered it and now the Creator's light is hidden within. And that's the secret of our souls. That's who we really are. You are wrapped with a body. You have your face, you have your head, you have your ears, you have your shoulders. I, By the way, I also have ears. They're just like hidden, but I have them. I'm like, I'm, I'm normal. It's, it's, I'm like, we're not uh, aliens. We, we also have ears. So, the the the, um, the the souls are covered with physical bodies that are being used as vehicles but really who we are from within is the same beam of light the same portion of heaven that been separated from him and been sent by him to under the husks to behind the curtains and we are there and that concept is called crying water those souls are being called crying water crying water because those that water is a portion of water that been cut and divided from its divine source the source of of water the source of pure and holy souls the sea of souls and from that godly place we've been sent into a world of forgetfulness and we don't remember and we don't realize and we don't understand and we're stuck here in bodies now the first man Adam he found himself in the same situation exactly as we are he was floating somewhere in heaven and suddenly recognizing himself as a creation as a being with hands with legs with the face and shoulders and on and the Creator is telling him hey I want you to come into the Garden of Eden there are going to be sweet things over there, it's a beautiful place, like you're going to like it, you're going to enjoy it. And he's, okay, so let's see what happens. And immediately when he comes into the Garden of Eden, he starts failing. Like his body was not cooperating with the godly plan. The Creator wanted that creation, that Adam, that Adam, to be, to be good, to be righteous, to be nice, to be polite. But Adam was failing from moment one from the first second of creation he's collapsing like he didn't have one minute of success that you can say you know what what happened to him he failed from the beginning like he crashed down to the world and then he crashed again and then he crashed in the third time and in the fourth time fifth time and from one generation to the next the soul is being reincarnated down to the world again and again being sent again to to try again and to maybe to try to fix some more things that needs to be fixed and to achieve more things that needs to be achieved but in every generation we're just going lower and lower we're just like failing more and more now because that we received the Torah and because that the Torah set is a very high level of how a person should act and, 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 and behave and he needs to be righteous and he needs to be pure and he needs to be holy and the Creator is like looking and there is that heaven court that is judging you on every thought, on every word, on every act and you're being judged on them and you're being asked on them and you're being measured on them and if you're failing so you're gonna be punished and if you did something good so you're gonna be rewarded but in reality, when you look deep into the root of yourself, like we all realize inside of us there is a certain place that we say to ourselves all the time, like, it's too much. Like, I, I don't really have the strength for this test anymore. Like, things are like so heavy. 
Like sometimes you're going on 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 on, on certain journeys, on certain uh, tasks that you don't see an end to them, that you can't uh, comprehend how in the world the Creator thought that I'm able to to win that game, to succeed in that mission, to accomplish the goals that have been set for me to to accomplish. Like I'm, who am I? Like I'm a person. Like I have a certain amount of battery, I have a certain amount of power, only so and so amount of knowledge, of understanding, of, 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 of power, of energy, of life, and like in reality, people are failing. And like we said, that the verse itself is saying that there cannot be a righteous man that will do only good and not gonna sin. What it brings me to that understanding, why the verse is saying to us, that we're asking from the Creator, Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem, renew our days like they were before. Before what? What does it mean before? Before what? Before time. We're asking from the Creator to climb above time. Because we realize that time is a limitation that is blocking us. We are asking from the Creator to bless us in a blessing that came from before space and place. We're asking from the Creator to help us to climb and to rise to that place of before time and before creation. And that's the real meaning that we should ask when we're asking for the redemption to come, for the Creator to remember, to understand that there's no way in the world that we can stand in the standards of Heaven's court. There is no way in the world that we will not fail. There is no option. There is no righteous man on earth that will do only good and not going to sin, not going to fail in sins. It's not happening. It cannot happen. And why it cannot happen? Because something in the nature of our creation brings us to sin. And because that we see that we are falling from the first moment of our creation and because that we see that no matter which effort we're putting in certain times in our life still in the next moment we're going to fail again and even though that you had certain generations that people were very pure in those generations and people were very holy and really were ready to sacrifice themselves in the next morning a new generation came, a generation that didn't remember the past, that couldn't care less about the tradition, and they just changed the direction dramatically in a radical way to the, to the other, to the opposite side. And like, that's it. Now go deal with the results of a whole generation that are sinning, that are failing, that are going against the path, against the commandments. You're like, you cannot heal it. For example, us. We came out to the world in a generation that came to, to, to reality after the Holocaust, after horrible things and horrible decrees and new spirits with new ideas came to the world and generations on generations of poverty and horrible decrees that took place in the lives of our forefathers and, 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 and we found ourselves coming out to a world with no connection to reality, without no understanding of the real true purpose of life. And everyone are just like um, in, 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 in dreamland, thinking about rollerblades and a new Apple and, 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 and computers and iPhones and iPads and like everyone are like, oh, everyone lives his life in a movie. Like everyone thinks, oh, the new movie of the Avengers, oh, Star Wars, like everyone are like stuck in a certain bubble of fake reality and, and without understanding even how far they are, we are from the true reality that we need to believe in ourselves, that we need to recognize the light of our souls, that we have amazing potential, that we can rise to the heights, that we have the ability like the earlier prophets that were able to talk to the Creator and to bring Him down and to bring redemption and to open the sea and to make wonders in the world. Like today, ask a person, what do you know to do? Like. I, I have knowledge in PC, I know how to work with uh, Windows 98, I am uh, like, um, you don't know anything, like you don't know the number of your shoes, like you don't know how to tie your shoes, you don't have a clue, 
Uh, like, what do you know how to do? What do you know to do? Like, I'm, no one knows anything. Like, people are so lost and confused. People don't like, all right, I, I know how to play. You don't know anything about music to play. And even if you can catch the guitar and to fight with it, that it's going to make some sounds, like you're still so far from the world of tunes, from the world of music, from the true potential of what really a person can do with a guitar, what a real player can do with, with, with a violin, with, with a piano, with, 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 with a flute, and like uh, things that were and really dig and, and, and bury deep in the mind, in the back of our heads, uh, uh, that is the true potential of us as souls, are very, very far from our awareness, very far from our part to reach. And a person is being satisfied very fast with his abilities and capabilities. Oh, me, no, I know. I know how to count till 10. I know how to, like, and, and you're so proud of yourself. I, know, I can manage driving without ways. Like, yeah, I know the direction. Like, those are tiny things. That, those are like tiny, tiny, tiny things. And still you're so satisfied with yourself and going proudly to show off, oh me, I don't need the ways, me, no, I don't need to ask directions, like all those nonsense. When, Like you barely know who you are. When you look at the mirror, do you know who you are? Do you know to which tribe you belong to? Do you know the skills of your soul? Do you know the powers, the true potential of your spirit? Do you know what you can reach? Do you know what happens with your to your prayer when it, when, when, when it's rising to to the sky? Do you know if prayers are being accepted in our generation or not? Do you know what's going on? Do you know which angels are, are providing which uh, bounty to the world and when and what is defecting spiritual developments and what is building them and what is bringing down amazing prosperity and health to the world and what is, is, is bringing darkness, which kind of sins. People don't know. People are so far from it. People are so lack from that understanding. And if people are so far, so you cannot judge them. You cannot judge a person that never learned how to read on the fact that he can't read that letter that you wrote to him. You cannot. You cannot bring him to court and blame him. No, I sent you a letter. I never learned how to read. Like if really a judge will listen to that case, he will say, look, like, I understand you send him the letter, it was very nice of you, the letter came in the mail and he just like put it in the garbage because that person doesn't know how to read. You cannot blame him for ignoring your letter when he doesn't know how to read. So the Creator himself, he created us and he sent us, but basically, really, literally, he sent himself down to this world because there was no one there in s except of him and when he sent that beam of light he sent himself into the darkness of this world and the portions of our souls are portions of heaven from above and we ourselves are godly souls so it's like the creator himself sent himself into those vehicles and sent himself to this world and now judging himself from not, for not being proper, for misbehaving, for sinning, for violating the rules. And I'm saying, guys, we need to look deeper into the past. We need to look into that early days of Kedem, into those days of before creation, before time, and to tell Hashem, like, what do you want from me? What do you want from us? Like, how can you, how can you blame us on your creation? And it's not that we're trying to exempt ourselves from responsibility. We're just like honestly admitting we're not able to do it. Like, we don't know how not to be scared. We don't know how not to be afraid. We don't know how to stop our lusts and desires when they're all, all, all around us. We don't know how to do it. You have people that are violating the covenant from age zero, from age three. You have children that grew up in such messed up houses. You cannot blame that kid for sinning. Like there's no way in the world. If his father, if his mother were watching filthy movies while he grew up, if they just have a normal regular television in the house, what, like, what do you want? How do you want him to be pure and holy and righteous? 
you sent him to sit even and learn Torah from age zero. Okay, he learned in religious school and he went to all the classes. But you know who were the guys with him in school. You know what were the conversations. You know the rabbis that taught him not always were the most righteous and pure and amazing people. Like some of them were real messed up people. Real, real like, uh, you know, how you call that? Fruit cases. Like people are crazy. And, 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 and. So he grew up between those crazy ones and you might be even crazier than everyone else as a parent teaching and trying to guide him and like and you you yourself fail all the time and, and failing in front of his eyes and he sees you so how can you blame him when he's only the fruit of your actions when he's only the result of what you brought to the world and even more so the creator himself that he really knows our inclination and he really knows how weak we are and how distracted our thoughts are and going and wandering around the world and 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 misinterpret everything that happens around us and forgetting everything that happens with us and and keep on falling and failing all the time so i'm coming to this deep understanding that we can really not be judged on on the failure of our actions and this is a very important prayer for us to go and to call the Creator and to tell Him that with all our heart. Don't judge us. Don't be hard on us. We cannot be judged like you judge us. We cannot be trialed like that. We cannot be judged and estimated based on our actions when it's the nature of our bodies that is putting us down to sleep that is putting us down to fail, that is putting us down to, to melt, to, to suffer, to cry, to be, to be so broken and so depressed. It's not something that we know how to change. If you're going to come and tell us and give us all your store, your, your, your secrets, going to tell us the, the whole solution, going to give us, going to hand us the key, okay, so we're going to pass that barrier, we're going to move forward from 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 our spiritual poverty and emotional poverty and we're going to be righteous and pure but as long as the knowledge is hidden from us and we are here barely surviving and barely holding on and doing the best that we can in every day of our lives and trying trying to to bring out the maximum from every day and day and we're still falling and we're still failing this is not something that is in our hands to fix. This is something that only the real kindness of the Creator to reveal His unconditional love on us um, might save us from, from Judgment Day. And this is where we should step into the picture and, and into this life situation and to be strong about that. We need to be brave and to dare to face our fears and to face the negativity that is attacking us all the time and from being such negative people that all the time criticize themselves and blame themselves and hate themselves and saying oh it was my mistake and look what I've done and I did so horrible and I wasn't right and how could I do that and how could I do this and like all those foreign thoughts are so foreign and so wrong and so so twisted that every time that you're sad or depressed and broken you should just throw those negative thoughts to the garbage and you should just hold yourself strong and tight to the positive light of your soul to the true and honest hope and yearning for good and for redemption to come and to remind yourself of the earlier earliest days of before time of before creation and to tell Hashem Father in heaven, we need you to, to help us. We need you to save us. We need you to, to heal us. We need you to give us the power and the energy and the knowledge of, of how to fix ourselves and how to bring redemption. It's not always in the power of the man to achieve those things. And when it's not, he needs to be honest and truthful to say the truth and to say, 
in reality I'm not able to do it I don't know how to fix it I don't have the clue of, of how to work on myself and how to improve and to become perfect many things can happen and uh, and the person will will lose his mind will lose his hope when is it happening when you follow negative thoughts when your mindset is negative and you follow negative people's opinion and criticism and you fall in that trap of all kinds of judgments if you would look deep into the heart into the core of creation you're going to understand that there is no place at all to judge you for nothing you just need to try to do the best that you can not to fail but meanwhile you need also to bring down more bounty with your prayers from the Creator you need to call the Creator from your heart and to talk to him like you talk to your best friend and to tell him listen it's overwhelming it's too much it's exaggerated we don't have the power for those tests anymore it's too rough it's too hard we don't know what to do we're not kicking we're not arguing we're not rejecting the the, the the wisdom and and the messages and 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 the and and the signs just we want to understand exactly what you want us to do with it because because it's not simple because no matter how much effort we put we keep on failing we keep on falling we keep on suffering and people are keep on dying and people are keep on falling and and, and losing their minds and losing their houses and losing their soulmates and losing so many great things that are so important in life and we shouldn't let it happen and we don't know how to prevent death and we don't know how to save life but the only thing that we do know is how to stand with an honest prayer and with that honest prayer we should stand like heroes like warriors and to present the truth the honest truth that is treasured and hidden in our hearts and to say the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God that's the only thing you need to do you just need to stand and to talk your heart to the Creator and to tell him listen I don't know how in the world you want me to succeed but I want to and I'm willing to and I desire to so give me the wisdom and give me the tools and give me the power and don't judge me and don't punish me and don't judge my friends and don't punish my friends and don't judge none of us and don't punish none of us just reveal your unconditional love on each and every single one of us and just bring down tons of light and tons of grace and kindness and, and light and to heal us all and to protect us all and to provide all the things that we need so, so badly. I believe in that prayer. I believe in that power. I believe in our power to go above the challenges of physicality and to bring the complete redemption to this world. It's in our power. Like that it was in the power of the ancestors, it was in the power of Moses, of Elijah the prophet, of Elisha the prophet, of many righteous people to fly, to rise, to open the sea, to bring out water from the stone, to make wonders and miracles with no end it was in the power of human beings not because of the greatness of those individuals just because the, those great individuals attach themselves to the true potential of every human being it's in your power as well it's in our power as well even though that we fell into 70 layers of, of forgetfulness into 70 years of darkness, into 70 years of exile, into thousands of years of exile. Even though that we failed and we fall and we lost track and we lost our mind and we lost our hearts and we lost our senses, it is still installed inside of us and treasured. And the true potential of every individual is so great and so powerful and so unique that we can never imagine and we need to remind ourselves of where our kidneys are and where our liver is and where our heart is and where our lungs are and all those organs are spiritual organs and we need to remind ourselves of our true potential 
and to go and squeeze our kidneys in prayers and to squeeze our hearts in prayers and to squeeze our liver in, in prayers and to squeeze our lungs in prayers and to go and to give it all in simple, 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 simple prayer in front of the Almighty. To call the Creator like you call your best friend and to talk to Him words from the heart, simple words, simple words of honesty and to just say the truth. So help us God. Amen. Kenya Hiratsan. Thank you so much. Because if you look for evidence from the outside, you're not going to make it. The world will not going to supply to you the inner answers that you need to get from inside. Only if you're going to follow your heart, with all of your heart. If you're going to be ready to serve Hashem in Barach, Bechol Levavcha, Uvchol Nafshecha, Uvchol Meodecha, and to go and to achieve the impossible, and to go and to overpower the judgments of this world, and to bring light to the world,